Okay, our first guest has worked as a grip, boom operator, stunt coordinator, and assistant director before taking on-screen roles. He's known for his work on Halt and Catch Fire, Den of Thieves, and The Walking Dead. As Victor Vasquez, Cooper Andrews! <laughs> the lead on Chuck for five seasons, Corral, Alvin, and the Chipmunks, and their squeakle, Romance, Mandy Moore, Entangled, Storm Broadway, The Revival of She Loves Me, and Charm, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Say his name, Zachary Levi! Two microphones set up in the aisles. Go ahead and start getting lined up, and I have some kickoff questions. Yeah. Ooh. It's like a, it's like a stick shake. And we are <laughs> going into a conversation. <laughs> Zach, you've done TV, you've done stage, you've done film, you've done cartoons. Yep. What's your favorite? Yep. <laughs> All of it. Uh, every single bit of my career. I'm, I'm, I'm just so I'm so grateful that I'm in a place in my life now, particularly through doing a lot of work and self-love and mental health and all that stuff, but I, I'm just so grateful for all of it, like every the last bit of it. I'm, I'm grateful for all the shit that happened in my life. I'm grateful for the darkness. I'm grateful that it's all brought me to right here, right now with you guys in Atlanta right now. This is so beautiful. And the fact that I've gotten to be in different genres and in different mediums just has given me another opportunity to kind of, I don't know, like flex different muscles, right? You know, like when you're when you're doing comedy, you're, you're using different acting chops than you would use if you're doing drama, and sometimes you do something like Chuck, and it's like an action, dramedy, mystery, romance, which by the way, when we started working together, I'm going to tangent, this happens all the time, um, when we started working together, this dude is so freaking awesome, guys, like, I literally, and he's so great in Shazam, he's so great in the White Dead, but we were working together, we started working together on Shazam, and he was just like the biggest, nicest teddy bear ever, and I was like, yes, I love this dude. And it took, I don't know, how long did it take for you to finally, like, a month at least to, like, of us hanging out, where I was like, hey, so uh, I kind of, like, love Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, really love Chuck. Like, love he was quoting Chuck. all of the stuff, all of the episodes. I'm like, what? You were a massive Chuck fan and you sat on this for a month? <laughs> oh, it was just so light. It was just delightful. It was delightful. Anyway, so, but yeah, comedies and dramas and animation. Animation's a little weird because, uh, or not like, you know, not bad weird, cool weird, that you, but you have to like bring an entire character to life seemingly just with your own vocal cords, that's it. You don't, you don't have your face to make facial expressions, you don't have your hands to gesticulate. You need to try and convey all that you need to convey just through using your voice and then trusting the animators to then, you know, bring that to life on their end. So, you know, fortunately for me, I got to play one of the coolest cartoons ever in Flynn Rider. I, I, I don't, I can't think of it. I mean, I appreciate the applause, but I know it's true anyway. Uh, <laughs> you don't need the validation. But I do, but I really do. Uh, <laughs> Short of that is, I'm just, I'm, I'm just. They're all so great. Every single bit of it is great, and it's particularly if it's challenging. If it's challenging you. It's a good thing. That's uh, that's you learning and growing through that process. So that's how I feel about that. Yeah. Cool. Over here. Hello. I'm, I'm a huge Captain you know, Shazam fan. From you can, you can call me Captain Marvel too. That's fine. For, I've been collecting the comics. They can be both. Well, I love it, and y'all did such a great job. I want to thank you for that because I didn't think it could be done, and y'all did it. But one of my favorite parts of Shazam is the wisdom of Solomon, and we didn't really see that in the film. And I wonder if you could address that, because he doesn't act that wise at all. Oh. Oh. It's kind of, until the end, he has some moments. But well, I, think, I think it depends on your definition of wisdom, sir. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would agree with you that the most modern incarnation of the Captain Marvel Shazam character uh, I, I, can't, I don't know exactly when the pivot was made, you guys probably, would probably uh, know better than I, but, you know, it, obviously in the way back Fawcett Comics, Captain Marvel, Billy said Shazam, 
became Captain Marvel, and the wisdom of Solomon was very prominent, right? He was a man. He talked like a man, and he walked like a man. And then somewhere in the 70s, 80s, I'm not exactly sure, the first time, when they were like, actually, what if he became the man, but he still had the, you know, the kind of character and personality and therefore kind of mind of the 14-year-old Billy Batson? And that's where that incarnation took it. Now, you could argue that that right then was when we didn't have the wisdom of Solomon in the way that that would always be. But the truth is, Intelligence and wisdom are two completely different things. Uh, life experience uh, can give you both. Sometimes, and I think anyone who has children can attest to this, I, I don't, but uh, I, I know many people who have children and I've heard uh, things come out of their mouth that you kind of go, how would you, that's so wise. How did you know how to say that? And you don't know, you may need some of the cartoons they watch or things that they pick up on from you, but I think that there's actually quite a few points in the movie where Billy uses wisdom just in the moment to try and accomplish what he needs to accomplish, most notably when he uh, very, very deftly uh, lures Envy out of Savannah. If you haven't seen the movie, spoiler alert, uh, uh, if you haven't seen the movie, I don't know why you're in the panel, uh, <laughs> but, but welcome anyway. Um, but that's a huge moment of wisdom. That was him realizing that all those other sins are being taken care of and we got to do that, but Savannah still got Envy sitting in there and he outwits him by a appealing to what would make him envious. That's hugely wise, in my opinion. So I think that while we don't get the mature wisdom, let's say, you do get actual wisdom that comes out. And also, he's still learning all of his abilities, right? I mean, there's quite a few things within the movie you could point out and go, well, wait a minute, if he's as strong as he is, why was it difficult for him to, you know, or not difficult, but like, you know, there was, there was like um, effort in like catching and holding the bus, right? Well, it's because I'm still learning how to do all that. It's, there's still like weirdness and awkwardness and fear and, and all of that while I'm trying to accomplish flying and all of it. So I think that's just us seeing a little bit of that growth. Does that make sense? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Your mind was then a moment of the wisdom of Solomon when you were doing it, when you were playing it, when you think I just it. spent ten minutes. <laughs> yes! Sit! Yes! I took your back up. <laughs> so my question is, um, I talked to you before about how much I like the show Chuck, and I know for myself and a lot of people, season five isn't their favorite. Uh, what? I don't know. <laughs> so my, my question is, have you ever been in a role where, like, you know, for a TV show where you got to a season or a few episodes where you were like, wow, this, the writing is terrible or I don't agree with this? Like, how did you get through that? Have I, have I ever watched a show like that? Now, have you ever been in a role like that? Or, like, on Chuck, for example, was there an episode where you were like, I don't like this writing, and how did you get through something that you didn't necessarily agree with the writing or thought it was not great? Um... <laughs> Uh, well, okay. You can be very big. Yeah, look, here's, here, here, here's the thing. Uh, you're not always going to be happy with everything that everybody else does all the time. You just got to deal with it. And you got to know that it doesn't reflect your on your own value. You got to wake up and do you the best that you can do you every day. And you're going to fail at it all the time. I'm sure plenty of my uh, co workers or employers have been <laughs> maybe not super stoked with whatever I've done throughout all of my career, too. Uh, there's been writing that I haven't loved. There was writing that I didn't love on Chuck. Um, uh, but, uh, but the writers that I did love, I loved those writers, and I loved our cast and our crew. And um, certainly there's things that were, you know, I, you're, if you're bringing the character to life, it's very personal for you, you know? And we're kind of like, if something fails, or, or, or you know, if it's a win or it's a failure, the first, like, line of defense of, like, if people really don't like something, we get the brunt of that before anybody else does, typically, because we're the faces that are on the screen. And all, you know, if it's a crap thing, and it was written not well, or directed not well, or produced not well, or whatever, and then everybody's like, oh, well, they're just kind of hiding back here, and we're like, oh. And that's our job to go and like sell it, and make it all really, oh, we had such a great time, and we're so happy with the movie, and they'll go, ah, like, I guess. Um, and I hate that, because I really, like, I just think being uh, authentic is the fucking best. It's the best thing we can be doing. And when you have to go and kind of lie to like toe the line of a thing that you really don't believe in, fortunately I've not had to do that that much. Um, I think, you know, there are things that in my career that I think weren't as high a caliber as other things. And I think that's pretty obvious when you watch things, honestly. Like one of the highest caliber things I've ever been a part of is the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Because, yeah. right? 
It's so excellent. They care so much, and that's what it takes, guys. If you want to make excellent shit, you got to care about it. You got to care about what you're making. You got to care that it is ultimately going to be in the hands of, or in the mind or heart of, somebody down the road. If you're making widgets, make it the best damn widget ever, so that the person who gets that widget is stoked to have that widget. I don't even know what a widget is, but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> when we make movies and TV shows, or, or 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 cartoons, or plays, or whatever, all I want to do is do the most excellent thing because. I know that at the end of the day, that's going to end up in your homes or on movie screens that you go to, or when you come to the theater and come and see that. Like, you know, people fly for thousands of miles sometimes to go see a Broadway show, pay so much money, and it's like, damn, that's my job. I want to make, I want to make sure that when they show up, they're getting the best damn show that they're going to get. So, yeah. So that's all that. I don't know if that answered your question. And I didn't give you guys the typical disclaimers, which is I'm verbose and tangential. So <laughs> we're going to Mars. Here we go. Over here. Hi, Zach. Hi. Um, so I grew up watching Josh Schwartz shows. Uh, in high school, I loved the OC, and then in college, I fell in love with Chuck. So I can't tell you how special it was to see Chuck Bartowski and Seth Cohen as superheroes. Wasn't that crazy? As friends. It was so crazy. So I just wanted to know what it was like working with Adam, and, and what are you excited about in Shazam 2 getting to try and play with that chemistry uh, that, that Asher and Jack have between you and Adam? Oh, man, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I, it, it, was, it was one of the biggest, I mean, Probably like the biggest secret about the whole movie that we all had to stay very hush yeah. about, which we were all super happy to stay hush about. But at the same time, we were like promoting the movie and nobody knew that there was this whole other part of the cast. We had to like keep it all under a hat. And by the way, a pretty well kept secret too, right? Like how many people saw the little bits of spoilers? Because by the way, like Funko, God bless him. <laughs> Although I need more pops, thank you. Uh, fan, uh, F Flynn deserves a freaking Funko pop, please, for God's sake. Hashtag Funko for Flip. <laughs> Flunko. Anyway. Uh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> there was like a spoil, because they they, on the back of the Funko Pop, uh, they, they, there was like an artwork that showed up like online where people could see, oh, look at all those other uh, adult superheroes. And we're like, what are you doing? We've been sitting on it this long. But how many of you didn't know? Raise, just raise your hand. How many of you didn't know about this, the Shazam at the end, right? Nice. Wasn't that fun? Isn't it great when you don't know what's going to happen in the movie? Isn't it great when the trailers don't tell you every fucking thing that's going to happen? And you don't know all the best bits? I love when people, like, literally on social media, people are like, and then the, and by the way, you guys are all so cool, too, because you didn't spoil it for anybody. You were all like, and then the thing happens, and you're like, what? And I'm like, I know what thing you're talking about, and yeah. Uh, so I can't wait to get to play with all those guys more. We didn't get to do that much in the first, because I said in the movie, but now we're going to have a little bit more to do and all that, and I really, I really wish that this guy and I would get to work together. But <laughs> until you guys are in on the secret, I Right, yeah, yeah no, it's, it was always funny, because uh, I hung out with you so much, I'm like, I don't think we did a scene. No. <laughs> well, we did. We did well, one scene where I'm sneaking up the stairs in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what are you excited for in Shazam 2? I mean, I, I really do. Oh, like Drake Boogaloo. Yeah, well, I, I, am, I am kind of excited to see because... That should be the name, I'm not kidding. Well, when you think about it, you think, uh, uh, the thing I'm excited about is I, I think that Billy, I mean, he was, he was chosen, and then the, the, the rest of the family... You you picked, but it's I, I am I do want to know what those powers do to to uh, to people that weren't chosen by the wizard. But maybe that's some part of that. Hey, that's some more wisdom. Yeah, that we didn't even realize yet. <laughs> and, uh, but I do want to point out there was a really fun thing that uh, that I got to experience was the fact that uh, a lot of the evenings I would spend time with the the kids. Uh, like we would do dinners or you know whatever, and then yeah, field trips, go to the aquarium. And yeah, stuff. a ton of like uh, 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 yeah, some stuff like that. And then later in the night, I'd hang out with uh, with all the bigs <laughs> and just the also just go to the aquarium. Yeah, yeah. Same, same thing. Like Mars or who does that? Yeah, I got at a season pass. We're really trying for Mars though, guys. So if you know someone, uh, uh, yeah. But it was so weird going from like you know going from Faith to Megan. And their and their personalities were just so similar. It's like, and, and it would just be in a few hours, I would see thirty years or sorry, twenty years of Channing. <laughs> Eighteen years tops. Yeah, fifteen means twelve. Well, really, I don't, I don't know. I don't know numbers. I don't know numbers, guys. <laughs> that was so much fun to check that out. <laughs> Over here. Hi. Um. I, I've seen the movie at least 
30 times. I love you guys so 30 much. 30 times? At least. You're at least. I, I, she, I, yeah. At least. She, she said this. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. You're a rock star. What's your name? Uh, Lainey. Lainey? Lainey. Lainey, nice to meet you. Yes. Just, just out of curiosity, can anybody rival that? Anybody in here have seen it 30 or more times? Twice. Twice. Twice in the front row. Okay, good. <laughs> We hear it thrice. We hear it thrice. So what was your question? Um, my question is for you, Zachary. Um, you are um, so open about talking about mental illness. Yeah. And for someone like me, I really appreciate that a lot. And I just wondered if you could kind of summarize like how you went from a dark place to to what you are now. You're so like lively and and seem like happy all the time. Who, me? And, yeah. <laughs> And, and, and you're just so exciting to watch, and I just wondered, you know, how, how you got to that. Well, the truth is, I've always been a pretty bubbly extrovert's extrovert. I mean, even when I was in the darkness, a lot of people didn't know I was going through a lot of that darkness because I've, I'm, I was very good at compensating and putting on the, the happy face. I think a lot of us in this room can probably relate to that. We are going through a lot of dark stuff, and it's very easy for us to just, you know, Put on that thing because you got to keep moving, and, you, and particularly if you have family uh, that you're responsible for, you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. Well, I did that for about 37 years of my life, and I got and I went through a lot of really gnarly stuff. As it turns out, uh, I had a super psychologically abusive uh, family life uh, from my mom and stepfather, who uh, they themselves had gone through. You know, it's all hereditary, guys. This is generational. You, we have to be able to, one of the things that helped me the most was when I finally was able to forgive my mother, two years past her death, and I, I broke down, wrecked, thinking about how much love I didn't ultimately get from my mom, even though she desperately was trying to show me and my sisters how much she loved us, but she was so broken inside because when she, you know, I just started imagining her as a five-year-old and the way that my grandmother treated her and my heart broke from my mom and I started weeping and weeping for my mom and then I realized I could forgive my mom because it wasn't her fault it's not her fault by the way all of the shit that happens to us in our lives all the shit that we put other people through it's not your fault guys it's not our fault we've been programmed and this doesn't absolve us and say we can do bad things but we have to stop shaming each other and saying how dare you I can't believe you did that thing people who kill people are not doing it because they're like twisting their mustache and you know they're that's not some Machiavelli thing they're broken inside people who start wars are broken inside and we have to love it all back to life and guys we can do it you can love yourself that's the number one thing go and love yourself you have got to love yourself and if we can all love ourselves and we can all love each other so much more deeply and so much more holy and this world is going to be so groovy it's going to be oh, it's going to be it's going to be great Go to therapy. I went to therapy. I needed somebody to tell me what was reality because I had lost touch with that. Honestly, I didn't know what was right anymore. I thought I, I struggled so hard to do what was right. We're all struggling to do what's right. And guess what? Sometimes we're struggling really hard and we're not doing what's right because we don't know. And we just need a... We learn what we think is reality from our parents first and foremost. If you don't believe me, better ask somebody. They're programming you. They are, and, we're, and they're doing their best, but they're not right all the time. Sometimes they're not right most of the time, and that's okay, because we can forgive them, and we can go talk to a professional who can go, oh, you learned this. Uh, some kids who grow up, and they're dealing with, with racism in their home, so they start becoming racist. Well, they're not racist in their heart. No, I don't believe anybody is racist in their heart. You are taught that through fear. People who are racist are afraid. We need to help them not be afraid. And that's just a one exa big example, but one example of helping someone to see what is real. You don't have to be afraid of these people, right? And if we, and, and if we can help somebody in that, you can definitely help somebody can tell you, hey, you are totally worthy of love. You are completely worthy of love. Just but the fact that you exist means that you are deserving of the life that you are living. We are all... We are all worthy of inhabiting the space that we occupy in this world. Don't ever forget that. So first step, go find a therapist. It's the greatest thing ever. I seriously recommend it to anybody. But in your own time, when you wake up in the morning, look at yourself in the eyeballs, in the mirror, and say, hey, I love you, and you are worthy of that love, okay? Do that. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Cooper. Yeah. I have a question. I, you know, you have to go. For, for Cooper, um, one of the things I love about the movie is how, with the uh, New 52 
reboot that Jeff Johns masterminded in the comics, and they brought to the film, is the Vasquez family is a family that becomes the Shazamly. But um, my wife was a, my wife adopted her foster son before we got married, and so when she saw the sticker in the car, I'm a foster mom. What's your superpower? That's awesome. Did y'all have to? Did you? The way you portrayed the family as as the parents was amazing. Did you talk a little bit about that? The yeah, training, uh, yeah. The advice you got? Can you talk about how amazing you are, Cooper? It starts <laughs> off with a good breakfast. <laughs> Berries and pop tarts. It's uh, great. Uh, uh, yeah, the, I mean, I guess for me, my, my thing was uh, uh, I didn't I, I didn't know my dad. Um, didn't grow up with him. Uh, I had like a uh, I, I kind of had a uh, kind of a not the best of stepdads, but my mom was awesome, and I kind of always imagined what a dad would be like, and I was like, man. I was, you know, it's not like a thing I wanted. I didn't know what a dad was supposed to be like, so I didn't know. You know, I didn't have like that feeling of like missing it. But I did know that what I wanted a dad to be like. And when I got, when I when I read for it, I just I knew this guy. Like I knew Victor. I understood it. And and just the whole um, the, the the line of look, I was a foster kid back in the day. You know, I get it. You know, it's, it's a straight up, yeah, that part of life sucks. You know, there's a part that just sucks. But, you know, it's like, let's, you did you did that part. I'm not going to remind you how much it sucks. I'm going to tell you what it can be. And, uh, or, or, you know, as Victor, like, lead you, you know, just try and show. And that was the best part about what I loved about uh, Rosa and Victor was the fact that it's like, we can't control you, but hey, maybe not do this. Don't, don't, okay, all right, Tofurky, perfect, love it, yeah. Let's burn the house down again. Um, and it's, uh, but yeah, just having that, was kind of having that, uh, uh, I was always like, man, what would like the perfect dad be? And that's sort of the thing that I didn't realize how much I'd been reflecting on that my entire life. I was like, man, what would a cool dad be? So that was, I guess that was sort of my draw for Victor on that, on where I pulled it from. And so, that was, yeah. You guys that's you. You and Marta were so good. Man. You were so good. <laughs> we both had such massive parts. Marta's so lovely. Oh my gosh, she's like a. I mean, she explores the city. She like knew. She knew Toronto. I think in the first three weeks. You know, and she's like she like walked around doing all these classes. Um, and it was it was just so like. And she invited all like you got like telling her she's, I think she was telling Faith to do. Like you need to try Pilates, and I'm like, whoa, man, you should tell Faith to do Pilates. I think she told everyone to do Pilates. <laughs> she loves Pilates. It's never too early, guys. <laughs> for the Pilates. Yeah, over here. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, I'm a big fan of Broadway musicals. This echo thing is really. So good. this question must be for Cooper. Yes, absolutely. Hello. Uh, I did get to see the broadcast of She Loves Me, and I did get to see Laura Benanti in My Fair Lady. And she, aside from being an actress and a singer, is such a comedian. I mean, it's impossible to not watch her being funny. Laura Benanti? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. So she's I was wondering if you could talk about just the experience of being in a show with her and in a show on Broadway. I mean, she, Laura's, I mean, she's one of the, you know, the royalty of Broadway. Uh, she became that quite some time ago and maintains that uh, position. She's super, super talented. Beautiful, beautiful voice. A comedian really understands comedy. Um, Jane Krakowski too. I mean, like we. I couldn't believe that I. It was only my second Broadway show. I've only done two to date. Uh, the first one was an original musical called First Date that never really got. Oh, did anybody see that? All right. <laughs> um, uh, but. But then, because uh, that went like six months, and there's not really a good recording of it online. There's, I've talked about this before, it's just actually really hilarious, but if anybody's ever seen, there's like a bootleg, total janky bootleg video that somebody did of First Date. You can go watch on YouTube, but this person was the worst, <laughs> the, uh, uh, what, what is that called when you go and illegally uh, say oh, something? Yeah, they do this, they do this. Thing. Pi uh, pi uh, pirate, pirate, pirate. Yeah. The worst pirate, the most lovable worst pirate ever, because what they did was they went through the trouble of smuggling a camcorder into the theater, got sat up in a seat that was way up in like the third balcony, way up on an angle, and then in the cover of the darkness, they were recording the show, and then were polite enough to put the camera down and applaud after every... <laughs> but then won't forget that they were illegally recording the show, so the scene 
would go on, you'd hear the scene happening, and then you'd like see the camera like, oh, 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 like, oh, 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 and then like be trained on this. And then the next musical number would happen. Oh, put it down. It's like if you're gonna go to the trouble of illegally recording this show, do it right, damn it. <laughs> Commit to it. Anyway, but she loves me. Uh, that, that first day was my first, and I mean, that was a crazy, an awesome experience with Christopher Rodriguez and all those cats. But uh, she loves me was like, I, I felt like I was like a freshman being pulled up to the varsity squad to go play a major game. You know, it was Laura Benanti, Jenny Krakowski, and Gavin Creel, and Michael McGraw, and Paul Gimignani, who was our music director, and uh, Scott Ellis, our director, like uh, Warren Carlisle, our. Our, our, our choreographer, it, they were all like heavy, heavy, heavy hitters, and I was the dude who had only done ever, I mean, I'd done theater in my past, but I had never done another like Broadway HS week. So it was cray cray. I couldn't believe that I was getting to do that, and I was honored that I got that opportunity, and for that to ultimately result in all of us getting like the cumulative like 10 Tom, Tony nominations and getting Woo! to be there and be a part of that. Yeah, that was a very, very cool experience. Yeah, thanks for your question. Over here. Um, okay, so Zachary, I've loved you ever since I was six, ever since Tang uh -huh. came out. Yeah, that's good so. taste. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you what it was like going from playing an animated character to playing a superhero. The dreamiest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I continue to check off all of my bucket lists. Like, I can't, I, I, I get overwhelmed regularly uh, with gratitude that I get to do. I'm, I'm feeling it right now. I, I, I can't believe that I get to do what I do. That I've gotten to play roles that have resonated with some of you guys since you were six years old. How old are you now? Just turned 15. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> uh, that, I, that I get to have been a part of your childhood and now your teenhood and maybe your adulthood. You know, That means the world to me. I can't believe it. You guys, I get to meet you all weekend long. <laughs> it's the coolest. It's like I, I, I joke about this at the table, but it, you know, people say like, "How's your day going?" I go, uh, "Great." I play my tunes, and you all, you lovely people, wait very patiently to pay us good money to scribble on pictures of our own faces. It's the weirdest, <laughs> most amazing job, and I get to do it representing things like roles like Chuck and Flynn and Fandral and now Shazam. These are all things that actually mean something to people, and it's just the coolest. I, I'm, I'm just beyond grateful. Yeah. Thank you. Over here. Hello. This is to say, um, if you have the power of Shazam, what would be the acronym for Shazam? Your <laughs> acronym. Uh, Cooper, what would you, if you had the power of Shazam, what would be your, like, a, like our own, like, activation word, not Shazam? Just Shazam, but, like, what kind of gods on the acronym? Oh, so we do say Shazam, but we get to choose the different powers? Yeah, like, like the, like the, the courage of Ares, the string of, you know, like, I mean, are you asking which of the powers I like the most? I no, think like, if you can create your own Shazam. If I, I could create any of the, well, I would, I would have all of the powers. I would shoot lasers out of my God, eyes, I'd God. electricity out of my fingertips, I'd teleport, I'd fly, I'd... Uh, read your mind, I'd move your mind, I would tell it easy all over the place, I mean, I, I don't know. I'd do like, like multiple man stuff, I'd create clones of myself, that'd be super helpful. Uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, all of that, yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I mean, if there's no real limits to this, you, you realize you're talking to two absolute true nerds who read video games and played, or read video games, although we do a lot of reading of video games, too, don't we? Playing video games or reading comic books our whole life. So if you ask me with no limits of like what superpowers would you want to have, the answer is yes. <laughs> All of the above. Yeah. Cooper? Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I guess I would get a little more. I, I don't know. I, I like the multiplication thing. Whoever can do. Make, what's, who, what god, though, was the S yes guy? Are, are you saying you want to know if we got to replace like Solomon and Hercules? No, but that's what he said. We actually still have to say Shazam, though. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm not. I'm not much of a. I'm not too choosy. If you just give me, you know, seven superpowers, I'll. I'll, I'll be there fine. There you go. Yeah, seven I mean, superpowers. Just. I'm very great. It's like a mystery bag. It's like yeah. boom. That's what you got. Oh, okay, cool. I'm good. I yeah. can climb on walls and. I'm glowing well, skin. So, like it would suck if you were like Toad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like there's some around. villains. I was like, I, I would never want any of that. It's like you have to lick it to. Yeah. Hurt it. I don't want to. 
was for your flash face and how in the world you didn't laugh every single time you did it. How in the world what? You didn't laugh every time you did it. Oh, how, how I didn't laugh every time. Well, I can't, I can't promise that the people watching me flash face all the time weren't all laughing at various points, but uh, bro, I don't know. I mean, honestly, we were doing the pilot and, you know, it's written in the script and Chuck, you know, sees something and then his brain goes into like crazy, you know, like files that are like flying across his mind and he's putting things together, you know, like a computer essentially would be kind of doing. And so I started thinking of like, well, you know, what is that? Like, what would that, what, how, what would be the facial response if your brain was downloading files or whatever? I don't know. And then we just did one. We were just trying it out. Like, um, the, for the very first time we shot it, I did it, and uh, Mick G was like, yeah, that was great, we'll do that. And Josh Ward's happy, and Chris V. Dagger's happy. So that's what it became. Now, had I known how many times I was going to have to spit that out, I would have made it look so much fucking cooler, dude. I, like, it basically just looks like I'm taking a massive shit. It's just like, it's like, like a... Sorry. Uh, well, actually, no, it's more like I'm just constipated. Like, sorry. When they were trying to when when other like when uh, Sarah or whatever she would get it and then she would make the face. Oh yeah, but you're doing the face. Yeah, yeah, you're doing the face. What face? And she does yeah, she puts her foot over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's how that happens. <laughs> Over here. What's your favorite character? Not including Shazam. Why? In, in the movie Shazam. Yes. My, my favorite character in the movie, Shazam? What's your favorite character in the movie? Oh, jeez. Um, on the spot, little one. Um, I think, uh, I don't know, I mean, I love, I love Jack, but I think, I, I don't know, I like Faith. I like Darla. Um, yeah, just, Darla's super fun, isn't she? Just, it was, it, what's fun about acting, uh, what I, I thought, like, acting with, uh, with children, um, is that they sort I sort of like to let them kind of control the scene a little bit, just, and it gives you so much to play off of because those their instincts. It's it's not. Sometimes it is, but with them, it wasn't like this pre-planned feeling. So I didn't I didn't know what was going on. And I was always excited about it because they always get something. But I just loved. Oh, no, don't make me pick between the, yeah. between the children. <laughs> <laughs> They're all my favorite. <laughs> I love you all. Um, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually I do think I think I think Darla is a character. I think is just so delightful, and uh, Megan and Faith both have this really lovely, just just warmth in them. I mean, I, I'm not entirely convinced that Faith wasn't actually created in some laboratory somewhere as a joy bot. Like literally, she she just would walk on the set, and her eyes are this big, and her little afro puffs, and her big smile. She'd be like, "Good morning," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> Like she was oh, yeah. just, oh. and then did, um, have you guys seen the behind the scenes or the uh, the deleted scenes or, or the tea scene that I do with Darla? Yeah. No, a few people. Anyway, go oh, check that out. It's a fun one. Watch that scene. Oh, watch that scene. It's so good. So I'll say Darla. I guess, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.
face. I did a Star Wars fan film. I want a purple lightsaber. Years ago, I did a Star Wars fan film in a barn, and it was. It, I mean, well, we. So Taylor's was all this time. I mean, you know, it, was, it was like a, it was like 22 degrees, but we had like this, like this, it looked like this. It looked, it had like this kind of curtain ball blue. Um, it's good and bad at the same time, but I like it, but it's good and bad at the same time. It is a Star Wars fan film. I, I, I told my buddy, I was like, we do this, but I don't want to have dialogue. Don't put dialogue in this. <laughs> Joel, why did you put dialogue in this? <laughs> they did this, like, he had like this like slight southern accent, he's like, she was a, she was a girl. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here we go. I didn't know about any of this, but yeah, it's called Ruins and Reckoning. And that's me with a lightsaber going to town. <laughs> Go find it. Go find it. Where paperback is sold. If you can. <laughs> Over here. Alright, um, this question is for Zachary. How do you think Asher felt about you being the older version of himself? I mean, he better be stoked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he felt good. I love that kid. I was, by the way, he sends his love and apologies. He's not feeling well. And I think we can all agree that it's probably best when somebody's not feeling well to be sitting at a table and shaking all of your hands. That's probably a good thing that he uh, is back home and, and on the mend. Um, but he really wishes he could have been here today. Uh, I, it was so cool. It was so cool getting to work with all those kids that Jack and I got to have all of those fun scenes together, that Asher and I got to be the same person. And he's just a lovely, super talented kid. And, uh, you know, it's, it was a... Uh, I say it jokingly, but I know that he was, I mean, he's been very supportive. I, like, there was moments when I was, like, down on myself, and he was like, bro, it's all, you know, like, he's cheering me up. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. Um, so, yeah, it was super cool. I really enjoyed it. I think, and I really do think he enjoyed it, too. But I can't speak for him. You'd have to ask him that yourself at some point. And if he says anything different, then he's lying. <laughs> that was another of those similarities, though, when I was talking about the adults. Uh, Zach, as you know, sings, and he sings amazingly. We did that karaoke. He went up there, I got these hoods for everybody, and he just... <laughs> he was at karaoke, and uh, I got these hoods with these little, these little ears and this scarf thing, and he went up there, like, hooded. And, I mean, this was, you know, it was a Toronto bar, and it was just loud and noisy, and just, Zach started, I think he started singing Creep. And, um, and that, this was, this was Zach everyone. Creep! In the bar, right? You're, you guys are the bar. This is everybody. <laughs> like shutting up. Everyone's like, "Is that?" And then, but uh, what I was gonna say is though, with Asher, he would also just go just singing around. So I'm like, I'm so, I have like both of you guys singing. I'm like, guys, it's, 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 uh, yeah. it's, it's so funny. Yeah, it's, it's great. Great. All the similarities between everybody. Yeah, it's, it's all meant to be. I love it. Who next? Oh, there. Tom. Uh, how was the process of the writing room for Shazam or the other ones? How was the process of what? The writer's room. I, I don't know. I wasn't in it. It was for Tom. They, they, I was not invited. <laughs> uh, no, well, I don't know that there's really a writer's room so much on features. On television shows, there's definitely a writer's room. A bunch of writers all getting together and cracking up on stories and all that stuff. Well, the features, oftentimes it can just be one writer. Sometimes it's multiple writers, but they're not necessarily working together, it's like, you know, one person does a draft and then that gets handed on and then another person will do a, a finished draft. But as far as I know, there were there were quite a few versions of this film that had been bandied about over the years. Um, and even in the, you know, the five years or so that New Line had it and ultimately was able to then make it. Um, like originally, the um, Black Adam was gonna be in the first movie, or at least that, that was like one of the concepts, but then The Rock, after he signed on to being Black Adam, became the biggest action star in the entire world. And so kind of deserving of not necessarily sharing that first appearance. And they thought a, a standalone Black Adam movie could be really cool. And also trying to tell two different origin stories in one movie is really difficult to do. I mean, it was tough enough to just tell my origin story and a little bit of Savannah's, right? But there's a lot of information. So um, there were different ver versions, but ultimately what you saw was you know, very, um, strongly, as far as I know, Henry Gaiden throughout, who is such a great writer and gave us such a great manuscript to begin with. And while we got to riff and do lots of improv, and there, you know, I don't know, 25% of the dialogue in the movie might be made up entirely. Don't quote me on that. Um, but also quote me on it. Um, but uh, I, 
but he, but you were only, we, we were able to riff so well on that because he gave us such great bones so great. to begin with that you could, you know, it was like knowing the jazz, you can then break the rules. But uh, yeah, that's. But I don't know what the actual writing uh, journey was per se. Are you a writer, sir? No, but I was asking Thomas, the moderator. <laughs> oh, 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 what? Oh, oh you're asking Tom. Oh, so was this also just some big joke? You were just waiting for me to stop talking so you could crack a joke? Not really. You sure about that? <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> well, as much as I love Mr. Sparkle Fingers. Thank you. Uh, my it's one of my favorite nicknames Cooper. ever. <laughs> Captain Sparkle Fingers, come on. My that? question is for Cooper. Uh, since they didn't ask you in the movie, if you could choose between invisibility or flight, what would you pick? Oh, oh I, I'd pick flight, because me, uh, all right, I'm 330 pounds, 6'2", Samoan, it's hard to be invisible, regardless, <laughs> I kind of got used to it, but I'd be, if I was like trying to sneak somewhere where invisibility would be a big use, it would just look like a, like a drunk ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get through here real quick. Sorry. I'd take flight for sure. It would be nice to be light on my feet. I, but I always have this fear. This, you know when you, you dream of flying? Does anyone else, when you're flying, you're like, it takes a second to get going? Like, you're like, all right, and I'm flying now. <laughs> I had this dream. This is years ago. This dream kind of stuck with me. I remember I was in... I'm sure this interpreter is probably a call for attention I needed, but um, I was flying in my dream, and I kicked my sister in the face on the takeoff when she was like a three-year-old. <laughs> I kick her in the face trying to fly. Like, I mean, in the dream, I kick her in the face. And then I'm like, ah, oh! And I was like looking how hard I kicked her, and I'm like, oh man, I didn't kick my sister, by the way. And I was just, I was like, oh, oh, hey, all right, never mind, I'm gonna fly a little later. I, was like, I don't know, that stuck with me, like an embarrassing first flight. Like, <laughs> I think I've only, I don't really remember my dreams. Anybody else, like, not remember their dreams at all? You just, like, wake up, and as soon as you wake up, it's like, it's gone. You don't, and the, you can't even get back to it. Most of the time I can't remember my dreams, but occasionally I can remember my dreams. And I've only, in my entire life, I've only, I've only had one dream that I can remember where I, 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 I and it bumps me the hell out. I want to fly in my dreams, particularly like if you do like lucid dreaming, right? Yes. Where you can control it all. There yes. was one time I got, I, I flew in my dreams, and it was like, any of y'all play um, Super Mario World on Super Nintendo? Woo! That should be everybody, but whatever. Um, so you remember how Mario had to fly in that? It was like you, he would like kind of like. To have to dip him down in order to like get momentum and so that was the way that I flew. I didn't even like fly cool. I'd be like, and I'd like perch on the rooftop and I'd jump off and I'd sit Damn it, can't I just go? I just want to go. Anyway, I know that wasn't for me, but what's next? Okay. Um so how did you do like the part um with the lightning bolt? Is this for Thomas? I just want to make sure. <laughs> Never living that down, sir. Uh, how did I like the part with the lightning bolt? Yeah. I loved it. Are you talking about when I was doing the lightning with my hands? No, like whenever you um, jumped off the building and set Shazam. Oh, yeah. I, it's, that, that particular shot in the movie, I think, is one of the best shots Woo! in the movie, but also one of the best shots in any superhero movie I've ever yeah. seen. When Billy jumps off that, and by the way, that was really Asher, too. Like, to arch your back that far back, and that stylized, and that pose, and the two feet, and, like, looking at a profile, and then all of a sudden, to say Shazam, and then there's still that little bit of dip, right? Because he's still, like, transforming while he's, while gravity's taking effect, and boom, boom, and then cannon's off. So cool. I loved it. Did you like it? I liked it. It was a pretty cool Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That is correct. <laughs> Over there. Over here. Hi. Uh, my question is for Zachary. Um, first off, I'm a huge fan of the movie. Thanks. But uh, one of the most impressive things I noticed in the movie was your superhero godlike physique in the movie. What are you talking about? And it's really amazing because it's... You see, your previous work from 
Chuck, where you're kind of skinny, no offense, up until like your godly physique in Shazam is pretty amazing. Thanks. So much that my sister actually put you uh, as number nine on her top ten favorite Hollywood oh, bodies. Oh, great. Well, you're not embarrassing her right now at all. <laughs> uh, just for reference, number one uh, is uh, Black Adam, so sorry. Oh, oh! Oh, The Rock is her number one?
sauce and stuff on my Thunderbolt. It was so funny. <laughs> it, it, it reminded me of like a, a, a Sarah Connor in, in, in uh, Sarah Connor. Uh, Sarah Connor. How are you? Come on. Uh, in uh, Judgment Day, uh, when she's just eating the burger and she's like, yeah, yeah. Was, it, it, he had to eat so much, and it was kind of. I feel like a lot of like, like even like through messages, you'll just like you'll be talking and eating because you have to. Oh, yeah. So and it was just nonstop. It was just funny. Uh, but we would go to like a restaurant, and he would still eat pretty much the same thing. It was just you know like better preparation, and he just enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like it was like Zach. Don't it was like won't talk. I'll just be eating yeah. like <laughs> the flavor and the food that because I, 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 was, I was on that meal plan also. And it was really good food. But yeah, like, yeah. But like, yeah. Go to a restaurant was not. And Toronto's so full. If you've never yeah, been to Toronto, so there's great restaurants all over. It's a really good town. But that was basically, oh, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, I started a supplement company called Flow, which is essentially only two products right now. We have a, pr a protein with uh, amino acids, and uh, we're actually going to do one uh, soon that's a protein with no amino acids for people who don't want the super low, so it's going to be naturally flavored, or naturally uh, sweetened. But then we also have a pre-workout, and that all came from the same kind of thing. I was like trying to find the best stuff for me, and I couldn't find it, literally. I couldn't find plant-based protein that tasted good and wasn't like chalk going down your throat. I, it, it wasn't anywhere I could find uh, that was up to my standards, so I started it, and, and that's a big thing. You got it. Supplementation is a very big thing, particularly if you're so. And go check out Flow Subs if you want. Flowsubs.com. <laughs> Over here. All right. So uh, with Shazam being such a powerful movie about sports, setting the tone for like the message that family can be anything aside from like blood. How did that affect you guys? Was it really rewarding knowing that you were telling thousands of fans like me that it's okay that you can love your family? No, you're not blood related to them. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, I mean that. I mean, like finding a family. I mean, I think it's something we can all relate to. And 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 some. And I I, I bet you there's that blood relative we all have where it's like, I don't care if I ever see them again. Um, and uh, uh, but but the just the message of that. And, and I, uh, my cousins who I love, they were they were adopted. Um, and they do this they do this cool thing called uh, airplane day, which is the sort of the uh, the, uh, like the birthday of when they when they flew in uh, when they came in from Korea, um, and yeah, just the, just knowing that you know, and I think all of us knowing that there are people who are so much like you that it doesn't need to be DNA and it doesn't need to be in there is something I've always thought. So just having that as a having that as a story as part of the story to tell and being such a big motivator, I think of, uh, for Billy especially um, was something. I, I mean, that's what, I mean. Again, I jumped on it and. I was so happy about that because I'm like, yeah, this is that is real. That is a thing. Yeah. Um, I hope everyone kind of has that experience for sure. Yeah, I think I, I think we got really, really lucky that we got to make a movie that had so many incredible aspects of its in its DNA. When you make a movie about a 14 year old foster kid who becomes a superhero, that comes intrinsically with so much heart and humor and levity. But also a part of that heart was that the beating heart of the movie, which is the family which is comprised of one of the most beautifully diverse, ethni ethnically diverse casts I've ever seen. And, all, and also, all uh, uh, one of them being a disabled child and all of them being foster kids, including the parents. Like, that's so much representation on screen that was so beautiful. And the fact that we got to tell foster kids, but also other kids, also adults, that, you know, uh, your family doesn't have to be the thing that you're born into at all. Your family is where you are loved. Like, you know, uh, home is where the heart is, home is where the love is, and you guys know that. You want to make homes for yourself that are loving, where you feel loved and the people around you are loved by you. That's why a lot of us, when we don't find it in our actual home, we go find it elsewhere. And that's, by the way, sometimes, I won't say um, uh, uh, better, but, but maybe it is better depending on your situation, but it's just as good. Love is love is love. If you're not getting it from your biological family, you can absolutely find that in your community outside of that. And that could be, you know, uh, literally just, you know, groups of friends, gamers. How many people feel loved by the community they find at a convention? Right? There's so much love in the community at conventions. And your, your friend group, your school group, your church group, whatever it is, all of that can be filled with the family that you you absolutely deserve. Yeah. And it's so cool that we got to do that. Thank you. Over here. Alright, so uh, first off, I've been watching Chuck since I was like eight, and we just finished Wait, how old are you now? Uh, th 12, almost 13. 12, almost 13, okay. Five years of Chuck, I love it. <laughs> we just finished the whole series last week. Again. You just finished the whole series last week? How are you doing emotionally? <laughs> how are you, son? 
<laughs> he went through it too, bro. He broke his big heart. My question was, what was both of your favorite villains from... Oh, uh, Timothy Dalton, 100%, was my favorite villain on Chuck. Volkov was just... I, felt, I think the fourth season was probably my favorite of all of the seasons, just because it, we had... We, we had been doing it long enough by that point and, and had, you know, refined it a little bit more by that point. And, um, and to have Volkov be a, a, like a proper baddie throughout the entire season and start as the, you know, unwitting, unassuming. Uh, <laughs> I, was in the, I was in the back of a pickup truck with Timothy Dalton surrounded by sheep. I mean, that's a memory, bro. That is a memory. Um, uh, but it was, yeah, it was, I think, I think Volkov was probably. But we had so I mean, you know, like, I can't believe the amount of people that I got to fight and beat up and, and, and best. Like, I beat Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know what Woo! I mean? Michael, like, what? Michael Clark Duncan? Michael Clark, Duncan. Oh, Michael Clark man. Uh, uh, um, uh, Chevy Chase. <laughs> like, what? Lou Ferrigno? Like, I can't, I, I can't believe that we got all the people that we did on that. Dolph Lundgren, I mean, like, it, the list goes on and on. So there's so many great ones, but Timothy Dalton, man, that guy is an actor's 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 actor. I've been a huge, huge fan of his since I was a kid, and, uh, yeah, he was great. Great question. And sadly, this will be our last question. No! The last oh. question. Better be good. All right. It's not for time. <laughs> no pressure. I'm hoping you both are men of culture, but my question is, what is your favorite anime, and why is it JoJo? <laughs> what is our favorite anime, and what is what? And why is it JoJo? And why is it JoJo? Yes. Is JoJo anime? Oh! What's a, what's a JoJo? I, I am very disappointed. <laughs> I'm it is an anime. In fact, right? Um, I'm sorry. I've just fucked one year of your life away. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that would do to you, fellow. But I will stay here. Now, I want you to tell me how you're feeling. And remember, this is for posterity. That's my favorite anime, bro. It is impossible to understand him in that movie. I can only understand, I didn't even know what he said most of the time when I was a kid, and then I got a DVD of The Princess Bride and I put the subtitles on. And I was like, oh my god! Saying that the entire time. <laughs> yeah, you're the brute squad. You are the brute squad. Yeah. Uh, I don't really. I don't know. I don't really watch a lot of anime, uh, and I don't know what JoJo is. Um, but also, I don't think that. I, I think one of the cool things about this world, and you know, the kind of you know nerddom in general, is that anybody can be nerdy about kind of anything. And just because you don't know other stuff doesn't mean you're somehow like getting your nerd card revoked. At least that's how I operate. But. Um, I, uh, I don't, I don't really uh, know, but but I guess technically my favorite anime is Voltron, bro, because that was yeah, uh, that's what I watched when I was a kid. That's, yeah. uh, that's anime. It's cool. Also, did you know that when they ported Voltron over to the United States, the I, this is what I heard. The right, the American writers, like they didn't even get the transcripts of what the actual story and plot were. So the Voltron that we got was completely, they just watched the series and were like, what do you think you're saying? I don't know. You know what we can make it about? Like, okay, okay, it's gonna be like this, this planet, it's this and that. Like, they just made it up. It wasn't even the original story. Whatever the fuck we watched was not real. <laughs> and yet it was still great. And it all formed the head. A weird line. Uh, so, Voltron. And go, Cooper, this is our last, last thing. What's your favorite anime? Okay, well, like, yeah. Is it JoJo? No, I don't know Do you know what JoJo, JoJo is? Yeah, See, two of us! Come on! Yeah, yeah, like, most of the people at this table don't know JoJo. That's really bad. Um, sorry, I wish I knew. Uh, yeah, my friends have been trying to get me on it. Uh, the last, the last one I watched, I think it was The Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah! yeah. How fitting. And that was, right, and, uh, uh, and that was fun, but every time I see, like, the in the anime, I see, like, the pretty little one, like, dude, I'm like, oh, he must be the leader and, like, the most powerful with, like, a dark past, because he looks like he's 13 years old, but surely he's, like, 200. <laughs> so, but that's, I mean, is that not all anime? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Thank you for the question, sir. Thank you so much, Atlanta. You're so awesome. Thank you.